He said, if an airline came and said, we are the same exact thing, we're exactly the same, but we're half price, you would question it. You'd say, wait, how are they doing this? You're about to hear a conversation between two agency owners who collectively have over 30 years of experience helping brands sell millions of dollars. Enjoy the episode. There are lots of communities online, and I think one of the, I think what ends up happening is people tend to think of the things that are top of mind only when it comes to marketing. So you'll start marketing a new product, or you'll, you'll start thinking, okay, I need to grow this. How can I do this? And you think, you know, LinkedIn ads, Facebook ads, um, you know, post on social media. And those are all like the typical channels, and that's fine. That's where a lot of people are. But online, there are also like there are also the smaller avenues that might be less crowded. And, um, and I want to talk about that because uh, our virtual character Olivia was online yesterday, and somebody said something like, "Remember Threads?" Yeah. And everyone like piled on in the comments. Everyone's like, "Yeah, I yeah. am." That was famous for like a week. Everybody moved over, then they switched back and like didn't really work. And, and then somebody said, well, you know, I landed a new client on Threads recently, or I got a new speaker for a conference. I don't know what it was. And, um, and I said, oh, are there still people there? Like our virtual character said, oh, are there still people there? And he said, yeah, not as much as, you know, before, but the fact that there are less people there is also maybe a good thing. Uh, and, and so, you know, we sort of had a small conversation on Twitter. It was something very, very, very small. But it got me thinking like, okay, well, then there's, there's people there. There's not a lot, but then maybe that's a good thing because the noise is less. So there's less noise. You can stand out more. You can make more conversations, maybe more one-to-one. -one. And, and that's something that when we speak to some clients, like we're one of the things we, we've talked about, but, but we, we haven't seen that execution yet, um, or they haven't asked us to do that execution. Maybe we haven't sold it properly. I don't know. Um, but it's the idea of like, okay, I'm going to participate in the different groups and communities online to try and capture a market. And, uh, and you can do this. Like the LinkedIn has thousands of groups. You can join. It just takes a lot of work because you have to be posting and talking and being. You, you, have, to be, you have to be a legit person involved in this. But you yeah, are, there's a lot of things that this is silly, but I have a client who is who a, multi, a, multi, a multi million dollar business that most of their business, they're still running out of Craigslist. Oh, man, I do that. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, they're like, so, and they're like, why? It's like, well, we know we have, we have been positioned for a long time. There's people who are still, you know, searching for that. And though they might be looking for, you know, value, because maybe that's what people were thinking about Craigslist. Um, you know, you will be surprised, like, just the fact that we are so, we have grown such a presence there that has that. Same thing happened. I have a, I have a, um, a, a marketing consulting friend of mine who was also telling me, like, how do you get some of your leads and having this type of conversation like I have with you? And he's like, you know, to Quora. And I'm like, Quora? And he's like, yeah. Yes. Like, wow, that's 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 a difference. So what do you do? You answer some questions. He's like, yeah, I answer some questions, but I'm just involving with the community. Same thing with Reddit. People who like, you know, pitching a lot of Reddit. It's, 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 it's on that. It's, uh, and they're still very, I mean, they are, it's, it is free. Yes, your time, investing in your time, it's not free, but it is a place where you can actually participate without having to, it's not pay to play. You know, it's just you show up. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking, like, obviously now with AI, a lot of these Quora and all these places, like people are actually using AI to just post. And, um, and you can see it on Twitter, like the person will post something interesting and in the comments, they'll just agree with that. And say, I agree. Um, threads is no longer the place to be here. You know, it'll it'll just sound so shallow that you sort of know it's an AI talking. At least for now, I think. I mean, give it, give that a year, and you won't be able to tell the difference. But, but for now, it's that's the case. And I think, but I, I, I'm actually a, a big fan of the person in the loop. You know, what I mean, like there's the AI can take a stab at it, maybe answer it, et cetera, the question, or maybe participate in a comment. But I think that there should be a person that analyzes whether or not the AI is 
saying something you know that's that's appropriate and then with that you know being able to like okay it said something um, i agree with let me fix this this and that and then post it like i think that's fine because at the end of the day you're 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 sort of outsourcing something to to, to a bot that should know about your business should understand it i mean if it's custom built right so if it's, if it's for you it knows what you're doing it knows what you're about it knows your sort of your history and then maybe you can answer in a similar fashion and then all you have to do is fix it and then repost it i think that's that could be a way to scale um all those interactions and all those groups uh but but i think my main point of the discussion i wanted to bring today is we often overlook all of that because it's a lot of work but it's you know there's there's a lot of space there to be to be had. Um, so there's LinkedIn groups, there's Facebook groups, there's Reddit, there's Quora. You know what I mean? Like there's there's there are so many options there um, where you should be engaging with the community and talking. And there's Twitter and there's there's also groups on Twitter. Um, and if you open that up, there's Slack groups. If you open that up, like you'll you'll be posting all week long and and sort of reaching perhaps the ideal target audience versus if you just do social media posts, I'm just going to put stuff on Instagram. Sure. You'll get some people who, who can see it. Maybe the algorithm's changing. And so more people that are interested in that will see it. But, um, but it's not as direct as say, I don't know, this is a B2B marketers community that talks about AI. Yeah. Maybe if you post there, it's different. I, I mean, definitely. I, 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 I you, you bring up a good point. I mean, the first thing that I thought was, you know, the difference between going to like, you know, like a, like a Costco, like a big supermarket. You know, you go to the big supermarket and yes, most of your needs will be met. But if you go to the meat section of a, of a Costco, you're going to have a lot of selections and a lot of choices and all that stuff, but you're never going to have it if you go to like a butcher. You know, so sometimes it is, it is that it's like, you know, when you're shopping in, you know, when you're implying to be somebody in an Instagram, in a Facebook, where it's like a lot of saturation, a lot of noise, a lot of things, you probably can't, can get to the person that you need to be, or you are one of hundreds and hundreds of individuals doing there, which is the great thing about like, for example, people who are in Reddit, who are like, you know what, I am a Reddit lover and, and this is what I am about. And once you find that niche group, you know, community that really reflects on yourself. And then they see that you are an active member of the community. You are like, you know what? I am more willing to listen to you because you are part of, of these. And so that's another reason why I'm thinking, okay, well, Reddit is more of like, you know, taking the approach of like, I want to go to the butcher rather than going to like, you know, the sea of, of, of noise that you can actually get lost through with it. Um, there was, there was a time where, you know, MySpace tried to do a comeback and, and then they did it for the for the music. Uh, I mean, you know, in the music you have like you know, uh, music cloud. You have Napster. You had um, uh, well, Spotify. It is thing now, but but, uh, but I'm trying to think of of other venues where I'm trying to think of. Well, the the point of it is just that you know people who were musicians that really were trying to promote their music. They were using you know MySpace when they were trying back put that into it. Um, I think that the brand recognition kind of hurt them and that's why they, it ended. But there was a point where, where if you were a musician really trying to produce music or find other musicians that were really interested in doing that, or if you wanted to like launch your music, it was the best outlet rather than going straight to like a Spotify, which is going to have a pay to play or, or, or an Apple music. Yeah. Um, no, I, 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 I agree. I think, I think that is a good position for, you know, for people to try to look into other markets that, you know, maybe, maybe you let go of your account a few years back and then you're like, you know what, let me just check out what's going on in that world. And then, yeah. and then get back. You know, there. you know, I was just thinking that, you know, there's an expression that says marketers ruin everything. Yeah. I really, have you heard this? Yeah. I fix everything, but yeah. 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 They, well, they ruined everything because if it starts working and then everybody piles on and then the consumer sort of catches on and then says, okay, I'm, I'm sick of this. So for example, when emails were something new, you started sending, e like you'd have, you know, 80% open rates or whatever, yeah. you know? uh, but now everybody caught on. And so now it's like, we get spam, you get a bunch of stuff you don't really want. And so they ruined it. 
Um, it, it, it sort of there's like, a, there's like a natural progression that happens where we find a new channel or a new way of communicating, and then we ruin it. Um, and that's sort of happening with co- with you know cold emails now. You get a ton of cold emails. They, they try to personalize. Like, the Nigerian print. What's that? Well, Niger- uh, I got an email from a Nigerian print. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that, those are old, but now they're new, and now they're more nuanced. They're personalized, like the, you know, and and. It's just a matter of time before everybody says, okay, I don't want it. No more cold emails. Don't want to even look at my email anymore. Right. We ruin it. And I, and so I was just thinking like if marketers ruin everything because we go all in and everybody sort of piles on to the thing that's working in the moment. And I was thinking like, what's the internet going to look like in 10 years when we're building all these virtual influencers, people talking, um, you know, these characters and then AIs in the back and AI is a lot more specific now and a lot more detailed than it can actually carry on with your tone of voice and who you are, et cetera. We're just going to, you know, crank up the volume with that. And then is that going to ruin the internet experience or the social media ex- experience? Is that going to be like, you know what? I go in there and I, I can see Romulo and he's talking, but I know it's not him. Because we've talked and, you know, sometimes it's him, but sometimes it's not. And then he's posting, but is it really AI? Like, what am I really consuming here? Kind of well, thing. The, the thought that you were telling me was like, you know, you have your AI and then you have somebody that is still human managing the conversation. So there is some sort of moderator human. Yeah. Yeah. But some people aren't going to do that. Some people, no, are, some, gonna some people are not going to do that. Some people are just going to be like active there. And then it's going to be like, so I am I talking to a real person or am I talking to a bot? Uh, which became the whole thing about, um, I think one of my first experiences with this was, I think you know, I had to like pay something like, a, you know, my, my cable bill or something like that. And I went into the cable and I'm like, okay, you know what, chat, chat with somebody. And they have like the face of the individual and you're like, you know what? Why is my internet not working today? You know, kind of thing. And then, you know, hi, how can I help you? You know, hi, this is Jolanda. How can I help you? Hey, Jolanda. So yesterday a lightning came here and, you know, I live in this zip code and whatever things are broken. Oh, okay. Well, and then, then you got it prompted and you're like, are you a bot? You know, false, big time. And then it was like, how, how can I help you? And it was just like, it really killed the whole section of like, well, I love the concept that I had a person that I could chat with. And 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 I and I get it, you know, having somebody on the phone can be tough, can be tedious. It also, if I am angry or my voice is going to be, you can actually sense it when you're on my chat and you can still have a little bit of a filter. But then when that happened, I was really, really upset. So... I believe that, you know, it, it, it would be like, oh, I went to this great, you know, I had a great experience talking to people on that community in Instagram and then realized that it was everybody just a fake bot. Yeah, um, well, it, there's a moment like that in the movie, Her. You have to see this movie. It's really good. Oh, oh I hear about wow. it. And have you, do, you, do you want, should, would I ruin it for you if I told you? Yeah, so tell me. I actually okay. went, went, went to plan to to, to okay. watch it. More to yeah. We'll talk about it later, but it, it's interesting. Yeah, it's a moment like that. Yeah, I just wonder what, what, what it's going to look like because then we're going to have, you know, it's going to be video, text, audio, all of these things. And then is it, it's, it's like, okay, I'm going to follow this account of this person. Is it really them all the time? Then there's going to be people who are like, follow me. It's only my, I'm, I'm a human. I'm the one posting. Da, da, da. And so you're like, okay, I need to be follow this person because it, Maybe because of that, or maybe it's like, look, I'm just going to follow these accounts that are interesting. And- the, the problem with that too is that I don't know. I don't know. I want to be very careful with this because this is, you know, this is public information from me as an agency. You know, mm-hmm. I have been very disillusioned with social media in general. Um, I remember when I started, you know, with a MySpace and then I had an account with, you know, Facebook. I went to China, you know, I had to get, you know, like my weight wall, my 10 cent weight wall, and all the things. Cena came back here, came back into 2012, huge Facebook year. Everybody had to be on it. You know, you could pretty much advertise to whoever wanted and all that stuff. There was like no rules or regulation. And it was like, you know, the old West. And then the more this happened, then became the whole thing about, you know, 
key opinion leaders was very common in China, where you had somebody who was like, hey, I am an engineer, and therefore I'm going to give you my knowledge as an engineer to do X, Y, and Z. You would pay this engineer to pretty much plug you in, you know. But here, then everybody became an influencer. I mean, if, uh, I was having this strong joke in conversation, but if you talk to people that are right now in their 16 to their 25th, like their first, like, wait, what do you want to be when you grow up? Well, I want to be an influencer. And it's like, you know, okay, I, you know what? Good for you. If that's what your dream is, you know, go ahead and do it. But, you know, being the person who goes to like Disney Park and have it and have that ice cream and share why that ice cream is great, you're going to be one of milk who do that now. So that is really, you know, not the proper way to do it. Plus also, imagine if I do find you and you say, okay, it's going to be $1,000 to work for me. Okay. Um, some people might give you that $1,000, but other people are going to be like, okay, I'll give you $1,000, but that $1,000 is really going to get me. You know, we have talked about this in previous, in previous conversations where it's like, well, if I find a Twitter person that has a million followers, you know, only if even if I hit up 2% of that, I am getting way more than I would do, you know, via social. So, so there is, there is an animal of that, but I also feel that there is, you know, this thing. Um, it also reminded me that when I was in China, there was this, uh, so Facebook was, you know, popular and all stuff, but then there was this thing, and I don't remember the name of it, but it was called something like, called like my, um, I don't know. I don't remember it, but it was pretty much like, I am going to invite you into a social network, but I am going to send you an invitation. And then you have, this is an exclusive, very high end, uh, a style of social network better than net better than you know Facebook where you know million dollar people are there and they talk about their jobs and all that stuff and they throw events and you the only way that you could participate was was if somebody who had a who was accepted to it had three invites and then you received those three invites. Um, don't remember the name of it. If somebody you know if somebody in the channel or anything like you know brings it up, it, it's true. But there was this thing about like oh my god I got an invitation. This is an exclusive time. I went into that place and I started looking into it and I'm like, okay, so one of their catch this was where if you are part of this group, you will be invited to private parties thrown by Bacardi and whatever. So that was a good hook because then you were like, okay, so I am part of this exclusive place where I'm going to be going to these, you know, these events sponsored by someone. So I'm going to have a good time. But then you realize that it became one of those things that it was just a platform where nobody really hung out because people still use Facebook. And Everything was there was just to sell you or to tell you, you know, here, these are the new Gucci sunglasses. Or this the new and then you're like, okay, this is not, this is definitely not what I, what I want. And then the whole concept about, you know, Facebook was that I could reconnect with people that I knew from high school. You know, although I was past college, I could still reconnect with those people. And, and I think that that's the reason why I lost this magic. Bring it back to what we're having right now. It's that it's going to end up being one of those things that it's going to be like, look, you know what, you can be part of, you know, of, of X and talk to anybody or everybody that exists, or you have to go to this place where you're going to make sure that the people who are there are real people. Yeah. yeah. It will probably eventually do happen. I don't know when, and I don't really know how, how that's going to Yeah. It, it sounds like the basis of like a good article, like how marketers will ruin every, will ruin the internet as we know it, you know? Um, I actually was going to tell you that, um, and this is not to, you know, if Microsoft is listening and they want to sponsor the podcast. Um, <laughs> Please, by all means. By all means, you know, hey, we love. But um, <laughs> so this week was a, a, the, a launch for a retail media network for Microsoft. Are you familiar with retail media networks? No. So it's pretty much the whole concept. Um, um, when he's done well, it's it's gone great. An example of this would be a CVS. You know, you go to a CVS website, and CVS website has advertisement of different retailers that they have within it, and you can actually, you know, you are scrolling. I'm searching for almonds, you know, and when I'm searching with almonds, then for example, I'm looking for many different type of almonds, and then somebody says, you know what? Um, don't forget to buy your you know, your Pepsi. And it's like, well, it's a relationship because there's somebody who is already doing retail shopping on your website. And then they see that you have, that you're looking for something very salty. They'll drop you, you know, Coke. It's not just like the whole concept of this is not that they're just throwing Coca-Cola because they're big and they can feel there, but more of like, well, if this person is looking for something salty, most likely she's looking for something sweet. Or, you know, they're trying to do like, hey, you know what? I am looking for, 
baby lotion. Well, then let me try to sell you the diapers and all that. But rather than saying it like Amazon, where it's like, you know, people who bought this also bought this, it's an opportunity for advertisers to put their space in there. Rather than doing it as a, setting this up for like CBNs and all these companies, it, talks, it takes, imagine how much it takes a lot, of, a lot of time because it's, you know, pretty much you're creating your own advertising agency within your own, you know, website. Um, so what, what Microsoft is doing is that pretty much giving you like there's one changing platform. So if I have a retail store, I can tag into my platform and then use their system so that you can actually sell your products and then also have these advertising going in there. So it's great for retails, for online retailers, because not only are they selling their products, but they're also getting a new income because of the advertising that they're selling to, you know, to whoever it's a product. And it would take you, it would take you to a different website. Well, it doesn't need to because you you can actually make it to another website. But the whole concept is that I'm already buying, I'm already begging, uh, buying baby, you know, baby cream. Most likely, I might also need diapers. So rather than having to go and get like you know my Huggies diapers thing and I click on it and it takes me to no, I click on it and it'll show me you can buy that six pack of Huggies, the box of Huggies, and all that stuff. So it is like real-time advertisement on a, on a yeah. point of sale where you're already knowing that you're going to have to put that credit card in pay. Of course, of course. But what I'm saying is the store has to sell both things. It has to sell the baby cream and the diapers. Oh, yeah. Like if I'm, if I'm buying baby creams and they want to sell me a, a video game um, for babies or for kids or whatever, um, download it on the app store, like CVS doesn't sell that. I'd have to click and it would open, it would take me to a lot, another landing page. That's not what it's like. It's, it's more like yeah. and you have my to think own product. Like, yeah. You have to think of it. This is for product. This is for retail. It's like, Hey, I am yeah. going online shopping. I am at Best Buy. All of a sudden I'm like working at Best Buy and it's like, Hey, I bought, Hey, I need to buy the new Zelda game. I go to the new Zelda game and sense, you know what? Don't leave, you know, don't leave your, your switch without a screen protector. You know, mm -hmm. tagging screen protector. You press that button, yeah, yeah. it goes there. But I've, I've I've seen that technology. Like there are companies that already do that. Oh yeah. But I'm sure well, Microsoft is a is a big player there, probably. Well, Microsoft bought one of the Microsoft bought one of the big ones um, a few uh, few months back. I mean, the whole concept of, of why they're launching it now and it's a and it's a big deal now. It's because. Um, they they are. They are pretty much tying it into hey now you don't a you don't have to create you don't have to have a, a team of developers doing this for you buy the out of the pocket Microsoft packet and then you can do it for your own retail store but we also have other ways that you can reach people because now we have the power of B and we have the power of Edge and we also own you know the New York Times. And we also own, so, so then they're trying to say like, look, if you are, you know, if you are a retailer and you can actually pretty much use our network or an affiliate network of sales, get our product there and, you know, try to take everybody back to the, the point that you can sell it. So it is interesting. Um, I laugh about it because, I mean, in the last six minutes, I've been trying to explain this concept. It's pretty new. But I'm trying to explain this concept. It's one of the biggest things that happened in 2023. If you were to look into Microsoft, where they actually do the press release and they try to explain the product, they make it even more confusing because for some reason, Microsoft is it's great at not explaining things simple. They just give you, they just, it's very hard to, to, to understand, which is why, you know, Apple has an edge and Google has an edge. It's just like, how can you explain it to me in a way that I understand it, you know? But... But it is it is that it is kind of like okay so now I am going to have a shopping experience where I'm going to have more advertisement and more things and more stuff so it's also kind of getting you know kind of getting into you and and back to that everything you know marketing through and everything I can just see myself you know going to any retail store now any online retail store and just getting bombarded by like advertisement left and right. Yeah. Well, the good thing though is the space will be limited. So the consumer will probably get the, the company that's placing the highest bid. And Which is, it will be as intrusive, right? Like it's not like you're getting. It is people. not as intrusive, in, and that's one of the biggest complaints. Like, hey, you know what? I have, you know, 
and I have liquid debt and I'm new to the market and I want to advertise in this space, somebody goes into buy peanuts, I want to sell them, you know, water. Let's say, you know, you're competing against the sign. Cool. It's going to have way more money than you have. So there is this thing that is, you know, again, giving back to whoever has the biggest pockets is going to win yeah. the election. But it's still, it, it, it's a very interesting, um, it's huge, it's growing, it's a new market. It's something that, you know, if you have a product and you're a small company and you're trying to sell, this is a good outlet to pretty much present your product because rather than having to, hi, we are the new beef jerky, you know, find us online. We're in Instagram, look, you know, kick it with our jerky. Rather than having to go through this whole thing about doing the hoopla on social media, yeah. getting the click, getting the click through, they went, right now, if you have it at CBS, rather than having to go through that whole loop of going through social, you can have it at the store that people are online selling and then sell your jerky there. You know, it works much better for you. It's a click, click. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's it, it just very interesting because as soon as I heard that, like, you know, they, they did buy a, a company that was already big into this this system. So it's not like they're doing it from scratch. They're just trying to yeah. Yeah. read all this. And I imagine this is going to attack. It's a chat GPT. Like their whole system oh, where, where you can actually eventually say, Hey, I, I need I need uh I need a TV to watch football this Sunday and it's gonna find you the biggest TV, where is the nearest place to buy it and all that stuff. So I think it's just gonna be into that. Yeah, it was a Bing chat. Yeah. The Bing chat is it's connected to open AI, so it's basically the same thing. Yeah. I, I wanted to talk about is I read an article about this this um this entrepreneur who, la who launched a uh, shower head, uh, it's in our newsletter, by the way, it's, he launched a, uh, a, a shower head company, basically. And uh, he grew it by, by offering something for free um, to, the, to, the, to the end consumer in, in, in terms of data, right? And so, for example, he lets you type in your zip code and then it'll show you the water quality in your area. And it'll show you what's wrong with it, or maybe if it's good, it'll show you it's good and sort of give you the justification. It does two things, right? One is you, you're interested, you're curious, it packs your creativity. I mean, your curiosity, sorry, packs your curiosity. And then the other thing it does is it, it, it sort of gives you a mental justification as to why you should buy uh, the shower head. Look at the quality of our water. I mean, it's terrible, and it tells you sort of what's wrong with it and why it's bad for your skin and your hair. And well, what I, I don't imagine the shower head has like a filter system or something. Like that. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, it's it's filtered. It, it does a bunch of things to clear the water, etc. And, uh, and yeah, sorry, I forgot to mention that. Um, and and obviously, he's he's also he understands that he's also sort of competing with like creams and shampoos and all these other things we use to sort of mitigate the effects of bad water. And part of his campaign is just like, look, it's just, it's bad water. I mean, if you fix the water, you'll have really beautiful hair, skin, et cetera. Um, and the article sort of sells it that way. Like this is a substitute to, you know, buying a bunch of creams and a bunch of stuff. And I thought it was interesting. The positioning I thought was interesting where you're Maybe you're not competing against other shower heads. You're competing against skincare products and sort of making that case. Or, or, or water being polluted. Right. Or, or the, the, the bad water. Um, I mean, his and, competitor would be one of those filter systems that you put in your house to make sure that the water comes out filtered. Kind of thing. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he was saying, and, and so I thought that positioning was interesting. And I thought what was also interesting was the idea that he launched this online and that he built this free tool for people to consult and you get a free report sent to your email that says da, 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 da. And so it serves a bunch of purposes for him he gets the email he knows you're interested he can then send you product information or content or all these different avenues he can take because he's got your email now um he knows your zip code yeah he's gathering information but it's you you're also learning about your quality of water and your things right um and i think that that's it sort of an overlooked, sometimes an overlooked tactic in marketing is what can we offer for free that helps our audience sort of move along the funnel that may, that helps them understand the product better, helps them make a more informed decision. 
and also justifies it in their head, right? Because people buy emotionally, but they also need to justify it emotionally, like in their heads, right? Um, so an example of that was airlines, right? Like if, if, and I heard this somewhere, I think it was Rory Sutherland. He said, if an airline came and said, we are the same exact thing, we're exactly the same, but we're half price, you would question it. You'd say, wait, how are they doing this? Like, this doesn't make sense to me. I, you know, are they cutting down? Are they, is, is the pilot uh, getting away safety? Yeah, yeah. Right. Is the pilot being paid like half? Are these amateurs? Like, are these planes new? How are they doing this? Like, it just doesn't make sense to you. But if they say we're half price because we don't offer it meals, you don't get to pick your seat, you know, our, our, our planes are smaller. We, we, you know, we travel at 11 o'clock at night when the, when the, you know, the, the price is lower for the, for all the airport maintenance stuff, um, all the airport fees. Then you say, okay, okay, I get it. Perfect. You know, I know when to use it. If I ever need a cheap flight, I know that's the company I go to. Uh, and so I think, I think sometimes um, marketing and branding is just like, no, let's just do the emotional part. Let's just connect with the audience. Let's just do, but the audience also needs like the logical explanation as to what, how are you able to do that or why are you doing that? Um, why is it free or what, you know, what's this promotion about? Um, like consumers aren't stupid. Like we, you know, consumers understand how things sort of work in business. And if you're giving away, Free French fries, you know, every time the person walks by, like, look, at they're, they're going to question that, right? Or, or if you're B2B in marketing, you're giving away um, knowledge. You know, there's just, well, knowledge maybe is, is, is more common now with the internet. Well, like it, it, has- it's, I mean, that, that whole thing about like in, 20, in 2017, that was like pretty much everything that you did. It's like, you know what? Yeah. Get, you know, subscribe here, get the free PDF that tells you how to. Right, right. And yeah, that's what works to some extent. But I think I think more than knowledge, it's like if, if our company came and said, you know, um, we'll we'll fix your computers for free or we'll, you know, give us your old Mac, we'll give you a new one. It's it's like, okay, okay, how are you making money with this? Like how how is this you know, how does this work? And I think people need explanations. I mean, they need the emotional side of things, but they also need to justify it intellectually and logically and say, okay, this is how this works. Um, but aside from that, I thought, I, I, I think the idea of offering something for free that captures the audience's attention online, obviously, because then you have scale and you can reproduce this a million times, makes a lot of sense for a lot of businesses, right? So the accounting firm could say, look, enter your, I don't know, your financial information or enter these four things that you you know, your monthly expenses, your income, et cetera. And we'll tell you what you can do, or maybe they launch. Um, and we thought of this for, for, uh, for our markets, but maybe you launch, you know, a, a version, a version of chat GPT that's trained on all the IRS information that's available. Mm-hmm. And then maybe you're a CPA firm. You say, look, this is my service. This is my service. It is, it is a, it is a pro. Yeah. I mean, the, the I, I, what do you want to say? Like, it is of value. It is unique of value. For example, this, you know, this entrepreneur who came up with this, it's like, okay, you know what? I am going to sell my shower heads because people on my hand, they don't know the quality of the water. They probably don't know where to get this information. This might be public information that nobody has gathered, put together in one place. He has a unique value position where you can actually go and use this tool to get this. And of course, then you're like, Oh my God, my hair is going to fall. I have to watch, you know, I worry yeah. and it's just going to be bad. Definitely. I have a, a justification for it. This is a very unique, you know, position and a very cool tool. Love it. But then the, what happens is that once you start, like, you know, there is a lot of just already done mass produced things like this. I mean, how many, how many realtors could tell you, Hey, I can tell you your mortgage value just by putting, you know, just by putting your the mortgage calculator, you know the family mortgage. Yeah. We also used to have it. Now you yeah. know that it was. You know, you pass like that curve. Yeah. Yeah. Well, marketers ruin everything, right? We know we figured out it works for someone else, and we all implement it. But I think there are other ways to go better. Like you can be more creative and say, "Okay, we're not going to do the calculator. We're going to do something else. Uh, we're going to do, you know, learn, learn. No, I don't know. If you're moving from one city to the next." Um, you know, type in your information, we'll tell you 
the best neighborhoods, the growing neighborhoods, which ones have more schools, which ones have like, maybe I, I there's more information you can give the person. I, I wonder the approach to, so for example, if I'm watching Instagram and Instagram is like, hey, what well, you know, what is your water? Okay, you get, that's a hook. You know, sometimes water can be really bad. It can be really bad for your skin. You know, if you want to know, find out, come to this link, put your zip code, put your email address, and we'll give you that information. Put zip code, put email address, and says, okay, you live here. Your water has this much, 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 much. We have a product just for you, which is the shower head. Then I love that journey because it's like, okay, so you took me all the way here. You got my interest. You got to find out that you're going to sell me a product that pretty much helps me fight this. That's a great, it is a good, I mean, it is a good example of a way that you have found the journey of stuff, which is what you're saying. Maybe, you know, offer something that is of value that might be yeah. free with the yeah. intention of having this. I think that the that guy yeah. presented really well. It is important, I think, for small businesses to find to find that. Those avenues, yeah, 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 for sure. And, and medium, large businesses as well. Like, I think... It's just, it's just, it's a marketing strategy that requires a lot of creativity sometimes, but it, but it really like could really drive a lot of results for, for brands. 